Hi, I'm Alice the Fabric Ninja, and I'm going to teach you how to put a pocket in anything. I've actually already set this one up. This is for a ninja roll, a carrier keeper for your kinder pack or other baby carrier. I've set this one up already. It's a large rectangle, and then this is actually our pocket, the lime green here. And up here, I have already sewn our rectangle on top. So all of this pocket is actually going to go through this hole that we're going to make. And it will end up on the back side. And then the long part of the pocket will just fold up. So the pocket will be created like that, sewing around it once it's inside. So what I did was I have my main body piece. In this case, it might be a purse for you, but this is a ninja roll. And on the outside of it, you're going to put your super long body piece, because remember, I'm sorry, your super long pocket piece. Because remember, it's gonna fold up, so it needs to be twice as long as you want it to be, plus some seam allowance. And then this is going to be where the zipper goes. You can put your zipper down here and make sure that this is going to be a little bit shorter than your whole zipper tape. This is probably pushing it on length, but I know I can make it work here, so I have. On the back, I have stuck a piece of inner facing to help reinforce the weight of the zipper. Turn this over so you can see what's going on. I drew a horizontal line that is perpendicular to my center line. So I actually ironed my fabric down the center to get a center line, and then I drew a horizontal line where I wanted the pocket to be. And then I put a line at each end for the length. Then I used my quarter of an inch foot, simply went along the line, sewed up the ends, across, and sew down. So the next part is we have to cut this hole open. So this is actually gonna be a hole in just a moment. I'm gonna draw it on here very quickly so you can understand what's gonna happen. You're going to be cutting down the center here. Sorry, my pen's not working great. But don't go all the way to the end. Once you get here, you're gonna actually cut into each corner diagonally. And you wanna get really close to those stitches, but not all the way through, or obviously your stitches will come undone. You can use whatever method works best for you to do this. Getting it started is sometimes the thing that's hard. So either you want to fold it and then take a snip to get started. So now I can put my scissors in the middle. Or you can take a rotary cutter and just cut along this line here. This rotary cutter is extremely dull. That's the one I use for paper. So I'll do it with the scissors here. Go down to here, and now I'm going to go right into the corner. I'm going to bring this up so you can see it. And diagonally clip. And diagonally aim right at that corner. Get as close as you can. Those should be close enough. This one actually might be too far away. So I'm going to take a tiny little bitty bit more clip. Okay, other side. I'm going to cut down the center, and now let's go into diagonally, clip, and diagonally right up there. Okay, so now it's all cut, so we have a hole here through both layers of fabric. Now we're going to take this pocket and put it through this hole. So it just requires a little bit of wiggling everything around. And what will make it look the best for you is a good amount of pressing, but I will kind of finger press this so you can see what's going on before I run to the sewing room. Sewing, I'm sorry, to the iron. So here you can see that all of the fabric is now through the hole. And once I give this a good press, you are not gonna really be able to see that lime green, maybe a little smidge. I'll iron that and come right back.
now that I've ironed it, you can see just a sliver of that lime green through there. I could work it back even farther, but I don't mind a little edge. I kind of like it. So you can see now that all of that pocket on the back is super smooth. I have a little bit of pulling right here in the corners. I could probably iron that to get it more. If you have more pulling than this, you need to go back into that corner and cut it closer. People disagree about what you should do next. What the experts say is that you need to pull back the top and you will see a small triangle of fabric. This is the triangle where you cut here and here. What you need to do is actually sew this triangle down to the pocket lining. The reason you do this is to keep your pocket nice and square. Over time, pockets get a lot of work. They get pushed and pulled, and to keep your pocket in really nice shape, you actually want to pull back that top layer, and you're gonna sew just right along the edge here, just outside that line of stitches, pretty much as close as you can get to it. I'm gonna do that on both ends. So here you pull it back, you can see that little triangle, and that's what you're gonna sew down. Some people don't mention this when they work on a pocket. I think it can still be usable, particularly if you're going to put a zipper in it. The zipper is going to do most of the reinforcement that you need. But if you're not going to put a zipper in it, like a welt pocket on a suit coat, you really need to sew these end triangles down to make sure it lasts a long time. I've sewn down my points now, right along here. It doesn't look like much because I also use black thread. But if I pop it over here, you can see one single line of black stitching next to that hole. And this is going to be inside, so you're never going to see it. Let me show you the one over here. can't really see the stitching, but if I flip it over, you'll see one line of stitching right here. If you would like your pocket to be open in the end, meaning you just stick your hand in it, there's not a zipper holding it shut, what you need to do next is top stitch around this opening, but I'm gonna put a zipper in this. And to put a zipper in, I need to turn it all over. I am using a zipper that pretty much barely fits into this opening. This opening should probably have been about a quarter of an inch smaller, but it will do. I understand that my zipper is black and kind of hard to see, but my customer ordered black zipper for this, so we're gonna have to make do for now. Let me grab a brighter zipper so I can show you where things go. Here we go, this is a zipper that will be easier for you to see. On a zipper, you have the stop on the bottom, and you have these two little stops on the top. These are made out of metal. My zipper here is made out of nylon. These metal stops on either end will break your needle if you sew through them. It is very important to make sure that these stops are not where your needle is going to hit. Also, the pull in the center will break your needle. Stitching across the teeth, as long as you go slowly and are using an appropriate needle for your project, you will be fine. If you are using a metal zipper that has metal teeth, you may not sew across your teeth. You need to sew up to them and skip over them and then continue sewing because metal teeth will break your needle. So the goal here is to be able to have this zipper tab on the right side so that you can unzip your pocket. That is the goal. So what you need to do is place your zipper accordingly. So we're going to center it right along this space. It's pretty much impossible to get it perfectly centered when you're looking at the back side, but it is important to figure out where you want the ends to be from the back side. So I'm gonna switch over to my black zipper again. So it will be face down. So this, the pull is going to be face down. And I want to make sure that my stops are out of the way of where I'm going to be sewing. And I know they are because they are both basically touching the opening of my pocket. So I will be okay here. 
Next, we need to keep our zipper from moving when we top stitch. Some people like pins or wonder tape. Some people even use a washable glue stick. I say whatever works for you is the best option. If you're gonna pin, it takes a lot of pins. So let's do wonder, wonder tape for this one. There we go, we got our zipper. And now we're gonna put wonder tape on it. So we're putting the wonder tape on the right side because that in fact is the side that will be sticking down. Oh, my wonder tape has decided to be sticking to the wrong portion. It's gonna be interesting. One more. My wonder tape and I have worked out our differences and we're now able to continue. So I'm going to put the wonder tape down the right side. Here it is sticky. So it'll stick right to your zipper. And I'm going to trim it off here at the end. And I'm going to also put it down the other side. Perhaps the other side is not 100% necessary, but I don't want my zipper to move while I'm sewing it. And we've clipped the other end. Once you have your wonder tape down, you're going to be pulling off this paper here. You see that thin film? That is the wonder tape. Now, Wonder Tape washes out when you're done, so you don't have to worry about it in your project later on. If you want to use a fusible hem tape, some of them will stay in your project long term, so you have to think about what you want to do. The glue stick is also a washable option. So here we go. We have Wonder Tape on both sides. I'm going to line up on both ends, kind of where I want this to go, and I'm going to take one quick stab at trying to center it. I know it's not going to be centered, but it gets me started. Now I'm going to turn the whole thing over and take a look at where my zipper is. My goal is to get the zipper teeth centered. If they are centered, you just kind of push it down so the wonder tape sticks very well. And you can see here some wonder tape is showing. When I'm done, I'm just going to spritz that with water or shove it through the washing machine, and I won't have a worry. So now that I have my entire zipper, it's nicely centered. You can go hit this with the iron real quick to set it. Zippers are really not supposed to be ironed. So try to iron around the edges just to set it firmly. Then we're going to top stitch. I'm going to top stitch all along the edge here. To hold this in place. You may want to use a zipper foot simply to give you a nice distance from those center teeth, but it's not 100% necessary here. If you have a nice quarter of an inch foot on your machine, that's what I would suggest using. So I'm going to hit it with the iron, top stitch, and be back. My top stitching is done, but I want to mention a couple other things before you start top stitching. One, I am using the edge of my quarter of an inch foot along the teeth. That is where this ends up hitting. Two, you need to make sure that your pocket square, pocket bag lining, is still laying flat. If one of these corners gets caught in here, you got a lot of reverse sewing slash seam ripping to do. So make sure that's all flat when you go to sew. The last thing though is you have the zipper slide. You've got to deal with it. How I deal with it is I pop that up as far as it can go and I start sewing as close as I can get to it basically without it getting in my way. So it might be down here. I sew, cross over, I come back, I get as close as I can deal with it. I stop with the needle down, I lift my presser foot up and then I open the zipper. So I'm sliding it past the presser foot on my machine. Then I continue sewing to the end, across the back, and of course back stitching to make sure everything is smooth and wonderful. So you do have to get the zipper slide out of the way. So now you have a lovely zippered opening. You can stick your hand inside, but you gotta make the pocket still. Let's flip it over and look at this pocket again. Now remember this pocket bag is huge. 
it's because it's twice as long as it needs to be. So the way you make the zippered pocket bag, or any pocket bag, is you're just going to fold this up. You just sew Sorry. up, across, and down. Feel free to sew off of the edges and then start again going the other direction. And if you have a serger, feel free to just serge these edges. I really like double sewing the sides of my zipper pocket, sometimes the top, because we all hate when your zipper gets a hole, when your pocket gets a hole in it, that is. How many times have you have a hole in your pocket and things get lost inside of your coat or whatever? I always do a double seam on the sides here so that it's a lot less likely that I'm going to get a hole in the pocket. It's also nice because this has a fold at the bottom, so you know that the bottom of your pocket is not going to get a hole. I'm going to sew up these sides and show you how it all comes out looking. This is the bag of the pocket all sewn. This is the folded edge. I've double sewn each side for security and once across the top. If I flip it the other way, you will see I now have a zippered pocket with a bright green bag. You might be curious why I didn't make the bag of the pocket black. It would blend in better. Well, yes. One, it's hard for all of you to see on camera if I do everything in black. Two, it's hard for you to see, actually. If the pocket is black, it's going to be so hard for you to see inside of that pocket. So unless you're making a suit coat and you really want to make sure nothing shows, make the pocket of your or the lining of your purse or bag a bright color so you can see. That's the whole concept behind Day Glow is it's just super bright. If you look at high-end tactical backpacks, the inside of them are Day Glow orange. So even when it's dark, you can still see inside of that backpack. Thank you for watching a Fabric Ninja tutorial. I can't wait to see all the things that you put zippers in because this same technique works for all the things. Put zippers everywhere. Remember, anytime you buy a Fabric Ninja pattern, you get support with that pattern from me personally, as well as my wonderful community on Facebook. Just search for Fabric Ninja Pattern Discussion Group and look at all the different videos I have here on YouTube. FabricNinja.com has some great tutorials and you can even sign up to get a free pattern. Happy sewing!